Hi, it's Tom again from Life 4.0. Today, I'm going to share with you our experience using a whisker pole on our sailboat Sea Rose. Whisker poles are an extremely helpful item to have on a sailboat, especially if you are sailing shorthanded as Karen and I are on Sea Rose. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of informative content out there on whisker poles and how they can be helpful. So I wanted to bring this video to you and hopefully you'll see that a whisker pole is a valuable piece of equipment to have on board. In this video, I will be covering two main topics. First, we'll discover the why of whisker poles. Then we'll get into selecting a pole, which will cover the various types of poles out there, design options and sizing. In the second video in this series, we'll walk through the process of installing a whisker pole as well as the actual deployment of a pole underway with footage from our experience on board Sea Rose. So let's dive in. Okay, so let's start with the question of why. It really comes down to better performance and handling when sailing downwind. For many boats, particularly modern day cruising sailboats, sailing downwind can be a disappointingly slow experience. To drill into this a little deeper, I'm going to use the following diagram to explain wind direction and sail position. The ring indicates the direction where the wind is coming from relative to the bow. Specifically, this is the apparent wind angle or the wind direction as it is felt on board the boat. A wind angle at this position represents a 45 degree apparent wind angle. Next, these two symbols represent the sails first the mainsail and then the jib. I will refer to that sail generically as a headsail as it could be one of several sizes of sails in front of the mainsail. So with the wind at 45 degrees apparent and the sails in tight the boat is sailing in a close hauled position. Most boats today sail quite well close hauled upwind with their tall high aspect ratio mainsails. They sail even better at a beam reach. On sea rows, we regularly see speeds of eight to nine knots in a fresh breeze at an apparent wind angle of 90 degrees. But as soon as the wind comes around behind you to a broad reach, about 100 to 140 degrees apparent, the speed starts to drop. An apparent wind angle of greater than 140 degrees leads to even slower speeds. With these slower speeds, the boat rolls more and becomes harder to handle as well as more uncomfortable. Part of the problem is the design trend of swept back spreaders. With these, you can't let the mainsail out far enough to get it perpendicular to the angle of the wind. With the sail pressed against the spreaders, it would cause excessive chafe and could also damage the rig. What's more, the jib or Genoa sail is mostly hidden behind the mainsail at this wind angle, shadowed from the wind, and it stops contributing to boat speed. If you've ever sailed in a broad reach, you will have experienced firsthand how the jib will collapse from lack of air, only to be filled suddenly when the boat rolls slightly, popping open with a bang, then fall slack again behind the mainsail. This repeating cycle can be very damaging to the rigging and sails, not to mention a challenge for off-watch crew trying to get rest. So this is where the whisker pole comes into the picture. A whisker pole pushes out the head sole and keeps it in a fully open position. This does two things. With the larger surface area, it allows the head sole to get out beyond the wind shadow of the main sole and catch some clean air. Second, it protects the sail from that damaging cycle of collapsing and popping back open. I have mentioned the scenario of broad reaching, where the wind is at 100 to 140 degrees apparent. But a whisker pole is also very beneficial when in the running or dead down wind position, with wind at your back between 140 and 180 degrees apparent. Here, with your sails on opposite sides, the wing and wing configuration, a whisker pole fulfills the valuable role of keeping your head sole pushed out fully so that it is perpendicular to the wind direction. Without a pole, a jib will tend to form a more rounded shape and collapse occasionally as the wind shifts or the boat rolls, leading to less surface area propelling the boat forward. 
To be fair, the wing and wing configuration is a tricky point of sale to manage. If you don't pay close attention to wind shifts or if the seas are large and irregular, it can lead to an accidental jibe of the mainsail, causing great damage to the rigging and sail. But with a whisker pole holding out the jib and the boom holding the mainsail tightly in position with the help of a preventer, you can safely sail dead downwind quite easily. We sailed wing and wing up the English Channel this past summer in 25 knots of wind using the whisker pole with much success. So that's why a whisker pole is an important part of your boat's inventory. It allows you to sail downwind, both broad reaching and running, with more control and better speed, as well as less wear and tear to the sails and rigging. So we'll move on now to the various options for whisker poles. First of all, there's a choice of a fixed pole or a telescoping pole. While a fixed pole is cheaper and has less moving parts, we chose a telescoping pole for its greater flexibility. A telescoping pole, as the name suggests, can be adjusted to the proper length for various headsails, from a small working jib to a large asymmetrical spinnaker. Then there's the type of material, most manufacturers offer the choice between an aluminum pole, a carbon fiber pole, or a hybrid of the two. Carbon fiber has the benefit of being much lighter, and even though it is more expensive, we chose this option. Managing a heavy, bulky object on the foredeck of a pitching sailboat is a dangerous endeavor. You can easily injure yourself or worse, fall overboard while trying to deploy a whisker pole. We felt the extra cost for a lighter pole was worth the added safety. With just Karen and I on board, resulting in typically only one person on the foredeck, the quicker we can get the pole rigged and return to the safety of the cockpit, the better. As an example, a fully aluminum pole for sea rows would weigh approximately 39 pounds or 18 kilos. The equivalent carbon fiber pole weighs 40% less at just 24 pounds or 11 kilos. Next, you'll need to consider stowage of the pole. There are three main options here. The whisker pole can be stored on deck using chocks. Most racing boats go with this option, but I don't like it for its tripping hazard and loss of space on the foredeck. The second option is to mount it to stanchions. This is a great option as it gets it up off the deck and out of the way of your feet. But the third option, mounting it vertically against the mast is the route we went with on sea rows. The whisker pole is out of the way completely and being fully rigged, it is ready to deploy. It is also less likely to be stolen off the boat. It does lead to more windage, causing the boat to heel over more in a very strong storm, but we have yet to find this to be a real issue. Next is the question of how to mount the pole to the mast. The simplest way is to fasten one or more pad eyes, or fixed eyes as they are sometimes called, to the mast in the position most likely needed to keep the pole level. The alternative, the use of T-track and a car to slide up and down the track, provides the ability to adjust the inner end of the pole to the exact position you need for the particular sail you are using. This option is a given when you go with vertical mass stowage, since you need the T-track to slide the inner end of the pole up the mast anyway, and it was the option we chose for sea rows. As far as manufacturers, there are really two primary whisker pole companies, Forspar, based in California, and Selden, based in Sweden. Both are very well-established companies with solid reputations. You'll want to look at their product lines and specifications closely to find the best option for your boat. We ended up finding a well-matching telescoping all-carbon pole from Forspar that we liked, and we went with that option. Lastly, let's talk about sizing. This is a bit of a gray area, I will admit. I would suggest you start first with the manufacturer's recommendation. Regarding length, there is a common rule of thumb that a whisker pole should be the length of the foot of the sail being pulled out. As an example, our 120% jib has a foot of 6.7 meters or 22 feet. 
and our code zero has a foot of 9.5 meters or 31 feet. Using that rule of thumb, it would mean we'd need a pole that could extend to a horizon reaching 31 feet. So I was a bit concerned that the recommended telescopic force part pole for our 44 foot Genoa Sun Odyssey was the 13 to 24 foot model in the catalog, especially given the pole's strength weakens as it is telescoped to its maximum length. In reality, the pole has been the perfect length. Even with our large code zero, we don't normally extend the pole more than six feet or so for a total of 19 feet, which equates to 5.8 meters. So it retains most of its strength and rigidity. One final word on whisker pole design. It is possible if you are handy to build your own whisker pole to the exact length you desire for your boat by buying a whisker pole kit. You end up buying a plain tube which you cut to your desired length and purchase the end fittings to attach yourself. Selden sells these with both aluminum and carbon fiber tubing. Okay, that wraps up this video on whisker poles, why you need one and how to choose the right one for your sailboat. We'll be publishing one more video on the subject of whisker poles shortly. It will cover the installation of the whisker pole and how to actually deploy the pole with footage from on board our boat, Sea Rose. As always, we hope you enjoyed this video and we encourage you to like it so that others can more easily find this kind of content. Lastly, if you have not already, please consider subscribing to our channel and commenting below. We always love hearing from our viewers. Until then, fair winds.